me now is NBC's Heidi Prisbler on in Oxon Hill, Maryland, and Dr. Paul Ofit, director of the Vaccine Education Center at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, and member of that FDA advisory committee that's going to be meeting this week. So, Dr. Ofit, first to you. Uh, on Governor Abbott's order, how is this going to impact overall vaccination efforts in Texas and potentially other Republican-led states? Because so far we've seen right. mandates are working. Sure. Our, our way out of this pandemic is to vaccinate the unvaccinated. That's it. I mean, we can have booster dosing, as is going to be recommended probably on, on the, this Thursday and Friday. We can give a third dose to people who've already gotten two doses of mRNA vaccines. But that's probably not going to have much of an impact on this pandemic. The impact on this pandemic will only occur when we can convince those roughly 60 or 65 million people who have told you they don't want to get vaccinated. They want to continue to be fertile ground for the spread of this virus so it can continue to do harm, continue to create mutations that may create variants that are more and more resistant to vaccine-induced immunity. It's unconscionable. It's There is enough information now about the safety and effectiveness of this vaccine to tell anybody who's looking at these data that, that vaccines are the way to go. So, so there are no good reasons not to get a vaccine, just a lot of bad reasons. And I think what Governor Abbott is doing is he's supporting those people who are using those bad reasons not to be vaccinated. And remarkably, in Texas and elsewhere, some of these people are the very people who are using hydroxychloroquine and other remedies that have, you know, no efficacy and have some harmful effects. Heidi, you've been talking to business leaders and federal administrators about the impact of the president's vaccine mandate for tens of millions of Americans. What are they telling you? Yeah, Andrea, this new rule expected to advance within the next days, if not weeks. And what they're telling me is that the vast majority of companies and regions see no problem in this being implemented. I talked, for instance, to the CEO of Columbia Sportswear, and he says they've had you're not going to have to send vaccine police into our buildings, that there's broad compliance. Now, the problem here is other parts of the country. Now, he operates in about 90 different countries, Andrea. And in our interview, he had a message for Americans. You all are actually the oddballs here. Take a listen. The world is going there. You know, you can't go to restaurants in some cities. You can't go to bars without, you know, you can't go to a sporting event. I mean, people who are not vaccinated are just going to be isolated. We don't want that. We have employees all over the world, and it's ironic that there's nowhere in the world really where they have this kind of reticence around the vaccine. But the truth is, Andrea, in parts of the Deep South, like Texas, like Mississippi, where I spoke with the CEO of a machine parts company, this is a real problem, okay? I talked to a CEO, Lex Taylor, for instance, who said he's had incentives to try and get his employees vaccinated, and still he only has about 30% vaccinated. He says a mandate, that's just not an option for him because he's going to wind up having to fire his workforce or they'll go find jobs at companies with a smaller number of employees. So where does that leave him? Then he's got to do a testing protocol, which he says is going to be really burdensome and potentially costly. So he is waiting this very, very attentively and very concerned about it. Uh, and Dr. Ofit, I want to talk also to you about boosters. We talked about it a bit just a second ago, referred to the fact that these meetings are this week. Moderna and J&J &J recipients who are 65 and older or have medical issues that make them high risk, uh, can they expect to get boosters? And what about the fact that the Moderna booster, we understand, should be a lower dose than just a third shot of the original Moderna. Uh, is that going to create a supply chain problem, potentially, once if this approval does come, uh, for people so to we'll get see. the Moderna booster appropriately? Right. So, so you're right. You, you, we'll see whether or not the approval comes. I mean, the, the third dose of Moderna vaccine is a 50 microgram dose as compared to the 100 micrograms for the first two doses. We'll see. I mean, we'll go through those data. On Thursday is when Moderna gets reviewed. Friday is J&J, &J, and we'll see. But but again, I just want to point out that, that to date, what we've learned about these vaccines, two-dose mRNA vaccines, is they're exceptionally effective against preventing serious illness. And that has lasted for, for the six months these vaccines have been out there. It, it's true for Delta. It's true for all age groups. So, so people who've gotten two doses should know that they can consider themselves 
fully vaccinated, there, there are some advantages to getting a third dose, as you mentioned, for people, for example, who are over 65 or, or, or live in uh, long-term care facilities, um, people who have medical problems who are over 50 years of age to put them in high risk of disease. But for the most part, two doses is, is highly effective. So I think the, the real focus here has to be exactly on what Doctor what uh, Governor Abbott is standing in, in the, the door for, which is to vaccinate the unvaccinated. That should be the mantra here, because we can get out of this. You have, you have roughly Roughly 55% of this country that's already been fully vaccinated. You probably have another 100 million people who've been naturally infected. Now, those aren't separate groups. There's overlap there. But you probably have 75% population immunity at this point. Get to 90% population immunity. Immunize another 35 or 40 million people. And I think we can put this pandemic largely behind us. But we just refuse to do that. It's, it's really hard to watch. And the resistance just seems to be hard hard edge. It's the politics of this, obviously, but there doesn't seem any way to persuade them, whether you use influencers or people from sports, people from Hollywood, uh, people from politics. Local governors seem to have had some impact in, in the Deep South. Right. I, I think that you get to the point where um, you have to compel people to do the right thing. I mean, Neil deGrasse Tyson has a great line, which is when people don't use reason or logic to reach a certain conclusion, reason or logic isn't going to talk to them out of it. I think at this point, it's not a matter of saying, look, vaccines are safe and effective. I think that should be obvious at this point. So you have to compel them to do the right thing. Dr. Offit, Offit thank you very much. I know you've got some busy meetings coming up at the end of this week. And Thanks again, of course, to Heidi.